ואתם מקליטים את השיעור. אנחנו התחלנו. Right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, okay, so today we're going to speak about the second personality. With the last two shiurim, we spoke about Elkanah. Now we're going to spoke about, speak about the second personality, Pnina. And since also we're learning next week, we're going to speak about Chana. And only after that, we're going to speak about Elia Kohen. So therefore, today we're going to speak about Pnina. So let's see the sentences. I've got them in front of you. Everybody, it's in big screen, in big print this time. Okay. Um, let me just do share screen now so everybody can see. Right, share. Okay. Can everybody see it clearly on the screen? Yes. Right. And that guy, Elkanah, used to go up from his city, Miyamim Yamim, Alishtachavot, Lizboach Lashem, Tzvakot, Vichilo, Shan Shnei Bnei Eli, who we'll speak about later on, Chofni Upinchas Kohanim Lashem. Iyah Yom Vayizbach Elkanah, there was the day when Elkanah offered up offerings and he gave to his Penina, his wife and children. And Elkanah Yitain Mana Achat Apayim. He used to give double the amount to Chana, we spoke about that. Et Chana Hev, Hashem sagarat rachma. Hashem didn't allow to have any children. Therefore, we've got what we call a triangle. A guy who has two wives. That means he's, man is for Mars. Now he has to deal with two Venuses. Okay? A situation like this is what we call a problem. Okay? We know in the Torah, we also have a situation like this where Avraham Avinu, He's married to Sarai, he doesn't have any children, and he brings in Hagar, and all the complications which go along with Hagar. And you've got the two sisters, Rachel and Leah, two wives. Two wives is never a big deal. And in actual fact, as far as the Torah is concerned, we'll come back to the second Pasuk later on. We know that Rabbeinu Gershom made a cherem, that a, woman, a man cannot marry two wives. Please look in line number 35, you will see. Nose adam kama nashim. A man can marry, marry many wives. Who? that's on condition, efshar, lemekam besipukayu, he can sustain them. Sustain them physically, sustain them physically, emotionally, he can sustain them in all their, in all, the married life. And the next halacha is Rabbeinu Gershom, Rabbeinu Gershom, Chrim, made a cherem, al hanose al ishto. He made a cherem that man cannot marry another woman. Now, what was the reason why Rabbeinu Gershom at that time made a cherem? Now, we all know that Ashkenazim accepted it. Sfardim also basically accepted it except for um, the Jews of Yemen. But also in certain communities of the Sephardim, they also, only for a certain amount of time, did they accept the Cherem Rabbeinu Gershon. Now, obviously, we don't allow it, forgive me. But basically, it was a Cherem because the Torah specifically says, specifically says the Torah says, Ikach shtei nashim, achat ahuvah v'achat snuah. It's written in the Torah, a man can marry two women. So therefore, the question arises, why in actual fact does the Torah, or did Rabbeinu Gershom, make this decree? What was the need for it? Now, basically, one of the reasons which Rabbeinu Gershom saw was the following. Not necessarily did a man take his wife, marry in his, where he lived, did he have two, two wives. What often used to happen was that the man used to travel around 
selling things, buying things. He was a merchant and used to go half a year here, half a year there. And he got married. He had a wife in a second place. And once his business stopped, this woman in the other place was left in Aguna. He couldn't care less about her, he had children from her. The minute he stopped going there, then one of them was left in Aguna. Rabbeinu Gershom saw that it became a massive social problem. Socially, it became a problem. Man having another wife in another place. Therefore, Rabbeinu Gershom decided to make cherem. Two, that the Jews of Ashkenaz were not allowed to do such a thing. Now, another reason, which obviously a strange, strange question. How, how can one rabbi say something and everybody else listens to it? No that doesn't happen in, in oh okay. no interruptions during the year. Okay, I'll explain. Okay, so Harold, I'll just explain to it. I'll explain to this question. Okay. Abeno Gershom was considered Ma'or Hagola. He was considered the light of the, in his period, the light of the exiles. He was like Rabbi Yehuda Anasi in his period. Okay, he was the Rav of Germany and France. Everybody went to learn from him. Rashi, his teachers were his pupils. And therefore, he had the ability, and obviously, and I'll go in a bit further, we'll go one stage further in order to under explain what I'm saying, there is a certain thing that Am Yisrael accept under certain conditions, a, uh, uh, what's it called, a Rav who was accepted by everybody. Now, I'll give you an example, one of the things which took place at the beginning of the state. At the beginning of the state, when the state, were, when Eret Yisrael, when they accepted the Rabbanut Arashit, one of the things uh, Rabbanut Arashit decided to make under the auspices of Rav Herzog and Rav Uziel, that, for instance, men who came from Tayman carry on living with both his wives, but in Eretz Yisrael, also the Taymanim only marry one woman. I'll give you another example. Rabbi, the what's it called, the Rabbanot Harashit said, there will no, be no more Yibum, there will only be Khalitsa. Okay, the Rabbanot Harashit, and that was more or less accepted by everybody, except when Rabbi Vad Yosef came and became the chief rabbi, he tried to change a few things. He said, how can the Ashkenazim, how can the Sfardim accept the Psak of the Ashkenazim? There won't be any more Yibum, and he went crazy about it. The situation is nobody does Yibum anymore. It doesn't exist. Okay? For all different reasons. But there are certain things which Am Yisrael have accepted throughout the generations. The Sfardim, some of the Sfardim did not accept it after a, th after a certain amount of time. But basically, Rabbeinu Gershom's Cherem was accepted simply because socially, emotionally. Now we come to the last reason, which I brought in front of you. And that is, share screen. That is what the Maharam, what the Gemara says. Gemara comes along and tells us, we're talking about a woman whose husband not be found. And everybody, men, women, and servants, can all come and testify that this man has been killed in order that she can now get married, with the exception of five women. Her mother-in-law, Kamota, mother-in-law, who doesn't want to believe that her son is dead, Atchamota, the man's sister, Sarata, his other wife. If he's got two wives, one wife cannot testify that her husband is dead. 
Vivimta, and the woman who became his Yivama, Bat Bala, that's a daughter. Rashi says, the time of the Kulo, the reason is, they perhaps don't like his wife. They've all got a faribol with his wife. Umit Kavnot, Kalkala. They want to ruin her. They want to say, husband is dead. She can then go and marry somebody else, whilst they all know that in actual fact, he's living. But says the Gomorrah, what about Sarah, the other wife? Does the Gemara know the hatred which exists between the two wives is so great that she couldn't care less? That means the two wives hate each other so much, she will fall in the trap, and the other one will fall in the trap. That's what the Gemara says. Shema, Amida, the woman, the mother, the wife, the other wife who testifies will say, Amut nafshim plishtim, I'll die also with the Philistines. Okay, I'll also not get married. As long as she can't remain married to him. In order to ruin her tzara, he gets married. I mean, she's willing even, the other wife was willing to get married to another person, on condition that also the other woman can't get married. She'll be scared. That means hatred is so great, and that's why they are called sarot. We know that relationship between two wives is always considered a tsara in the language of the Gomorrah. Two Venuses is not a good deal. The two planets, which are both called Venus, not exist together. Therefore comes along the Maharam Sheik, one of the great pupils of Sam Sofer, and says the following, Alke nearly Pashut, Yesh betakana zu, betakana of Rabbeinu Gershom, tamim rabim. One of them is, shelo lavo lidei isur, sin'a goremet lakakalot. When a man has two wives, it often becomes so much tension in the house, okay? We all know men are, man, men are Mars and women are from Venus, okay? When you have a situation where you've got a triangle, then you're in big trouble. And that's why Rabbeinu Gershom also decided to make that takana. System of two wives is not healthy. Far from healthy. Now, let's go back to our story. In a situation like this, whereby Nina has plenty of children, a lot of children, and Hana doesn't have any children, and in the eyes of Pnina, the husband, El Kana, loves Hana more than Pina. That is the situation which the Navi describes. Now, what's going to happen? Comes along the Tanakh and says the following. Comes along the Tanakh and says, Ulechana, line number 11, Yitain mana achatapayim. Now, once she sees the preference which Elkanah gives to Chana, Chiasta Sarata. And I've given the English translation because this sentence is a very complicated one. The language is hard, and especially given in a hard way because the Torah, the Navi, wants to give us a couple of insights. Chiasta Sarata, and her rival would frequently anger her. Gam Ta'as, I mean, she angered her, made her even more angry. Avur Har Ima, in order to make her complain. Isagar Hashem Ad Achma. Therefore, in parenthesis, let's look at the sentence. Sarah, Nina used to make her angry. Double anger. It's written in the sentence, two angers. Chiasta, she angered her, gamtas. Ba'avur har ima. In order that she shouldn't complain. Why would she complain? Sagar Hashem ad rachma. Now the word ki is problematic. What does the word ki mean? 
Now, the English translation is four. Okay? Now, let's learn the Mephoshim. Rashi comes along and says, Sarata, Eshet Bala Pnima, Dam Kaas. Kaas Achar Kaas. The anger is getting built up. The whole time, it's getting to boiling point. Amid, constantly. Did you go to the shop to buy clothes for your big kid or for your small kid? He used to tease her. And that's the double anger. The tension is growing. She used to tease her. We we'll learn the next Rashi in a minute. Ad Rachma, Neged Rachma, because she didn't have any children. The same thing the Radak says. Radak comes along and says, Tsarata, Nina Shaita Tsarata. Bechain Koshte Nashim Laacha, Lish Echad Nigrot Tsarot, Fishain Oivot Zuet Zularov, usually hate each other. Gam Kas, Kas, Achar Kas, Aita Umerit Ad Varim Shal Kas, Fishalo Yubanim. Avur Hari Ima. In order she should complain, says the Radak, the word harima, min ra'amupanim, yan zaf, in order that she should boil over. Beresh harima dugusha. Beresh in the word harima, please look inside the sentence, says the Radak, harima, has got a dagesh in the resh, little point in the middle. Now, usually, the letter resh can't have a dagesh inside because it's one of the gutturals. You never find a guttural letter which is a dagesh. Says the radak, the resh har ima dgusha shelo mishpat, not like the laws of dikduk. The resh can never have dagesh. The baleam sora. Now, let me give you a certain insight here. One of the things which we know about the Hebrew language is it lacks vowels. Lacking vowels is a very important dimension because if you lack vowels, then automatically when you look at the picture of the letters, you have the ability to conjugate in your mind all different meanings. For instance, when you word word chaf, Ayin Samach, is it Kaas, anger, or Kaas, you are angry? Jonathan Sachs speaks about Zichon, Oli Rabbi Sachs speaks about it in great detail. He speaks about the difference between Hebrew and English. English has vowels, French has vowels. Hebrew doesn't have vowels. Therefore, your ability change the context of the sentence is a lot easier for ability to create ideas are a lot easier because the minute you don't have vowels your mind isn't fixed on certain interpretations okay he spoke about it when he speaks about the different sides of the brain how they work when you write right to left or left to right we won't go into that the concept of vowels, says, says the Ramban, is that gives the neshama to the goof, the soul to the body. You have the body, the words, the letters. How you use them is your job. Came along the Baleam Sora, they also gave us new insight. And here we have this fascinating insight of the Dagesh in the Resh, says the Radha. Line number 30. The Resh are Ima Gusha. Shrokam Mishpat. Vachen Chazek Priyat Haresh. It's like shouting out. Complain, complain, complain. I'm making you angry, says Pnina. In order, what should you do? You should complain. Want you to make make your life a misery. 
that is the simple explanation, says the Radha. Then he says, yeah, she should be jealous. Why? Because you've got, I'm the chosen one. I'm the one with my children. My children will be the continuation of Elkanah. And you do not have any continuation. You will never ever be able to see children. Why won't you be able to have any continuation? Why does a woman want to give birth? Because she wants continuity. The other woman says to her, you won't be able to have continuity because Hashem has closed your womb. Therefore, if we go back to the sentence, let's see the sentence in the eyes of the Radha. Chiasta Sarata. And her rival would make her angry. Dam Kaas. Extra anger. Avur Arima. In order that she should what? Be jealous, be angry, etc., etc. What would happen? What was Pnina's idea? Eventually, what would happen? Hana would leave her husband. The anger would be so great. The tension would be so great in the house. Hana doesn't have any choice. She would go and ask her husband, give her a get, leave her. Then Pnina is the only queen in the house. That is the pshat. That is the pshat. Now, I'm along, comes along Rashi, and in line number 20, gives us a new insight. Raboteinu, 21, line number 21. Raboteinu amru, avur har ima, in order that she should complain. Complain to whom? Now, the simple explanation is, she complained to everybody. She would complain to her husband. She complained to everybody. All her friends. Come along Chazal and say no. Avur hari ima. In order that she should govern. Nina all of a sudden becomes a tzaddikis. Making you angry. Not that you should be angry. It's an anger that you should go to your master. And say... Why have you closed my womb? L'shem shamayim itkavna. And Penina, what? L'shem shamayim. Why? Because sometimes a person lives in a situation, say that that's what Hashem has done to me. In Libreira, I've got no choice. I live with it. Penina, Deep down, felt that Chana has become complacent. He lives with it. He can't have a children. Nina says, no, I'm going to make you angry in order you should dive into HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Therefore, let's look, go back to the sentence. Chiasta, line number five. Chiasta, Sarata, Gamkas. Her rival would frequently make her angry in order to make complain to whom? To Hashem. Why to Hashem? Because he's the one. He's Sagar. He is the cause of everything. Not your fault, Penina would say, would feel. It's Hashem's fault. You go on Davin. Now, that is the way Hazal. So therefore, are we talking about pure rivalry? Pure Jealousy, or we're talking about something far deeper. Chazal feel that the makeup of the sentence is more towards the Shem Shamayim. Let's learn the Gemara which speaks about this. There's the Gemara the following Amarabi Levi, line number 60. Amarabi Levi, Satan, Satan who went to complain to Hashem about Eov. The last chapter, the end of the first chapter of Baba Basra speaks about the story of Eov. And there, one of the Amoraim say, Satanu pnina l'shem shamayim nitkavnu. They, their intention was l'shem shamayim. Says the Abrabanel. 
פרש הרייבד, שהיה הכעס, אנגה, עבור הרימה, כדי שתתפלל ותתרעם על הקדוש ברוך הוא. You should go and complain to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. תתבקש רחמים. Why? כי לפי שהיה בעלה אוהב אותה, since she felt such connection to her husband, הייתה מתייאשת מלבקש רחמים. She became complacent. Her husband filled in, filled in so much of her life, she became complacent about, about, about children. And therefore she needed a catalyst. She needed somebody to push her. Chana, you're not going to have any children. There was no continuation. Since there's no continuation, what's going to become of you? One day your husband will die. What's going to become of you then? Oh. That's the way the rival interprets it. Efshar Od, says the Brabanel, another explanation. Efshar Od, Shene'emar l'da'atam, Now, the word, the Ayn and Chet, they're both lateral letters. Okay? The Ayn and Chet interchange. That means in order that her Rechem will be filled up. The word, Ar Ima, interchanges. Therefore, it becomes a concept of ad in order that she should feel that her womb will become full. She yearned. So now, that is the idea of Chazal. Now we're going to learn a portion of the Maharal how he understands it. Maral explains the following. Ma'amar, Shegam p'nina l'shem shamayim nitkavna, Ki ein ra'oi sh'yazkir ha'katuv, It wouldn't be correct that the Sukim would mention sh'ya p'nina tzara l'chana ha'tzadika, Ha'yta eshet el'kana sh'ya navi l'shem. Yotay mizek ki meira, First rule, Mira, lo yetzetov. From bad things, good things don't come out. Kinir e, bishvil hakas, aita chana mitpalelet ad Hashem. Ad she nolad Shmuel bishvil tefilat chana. Ve'im kein aya nire she'ara yotze mimena. Dabar tov. Because she felt so, so bad, she was boiling over. What pushed her to daven? Human emotions. Chazal don't like that concept. That through depression, through anger, through everything, all bad feelings, the person davens. The person can daven, okay, when he's angry, doesn't have the ability to daven to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He doesn't, says the Maral. Therefore, Nina, you don't want her necessarily to feel bad. Once she wanted her to begin to daven. It's not her personal anger. It's something from the external. Now he says the following, the Maharal. It says, V'da, Yasa asatan ve'isha sh'yitzara la'shniya ina dechad lahem. They're both the same idea. Kumo she'asatan nikra satan. The same way as the Satan. Satan. Bit naged la'adam. Ule satan lo. The Satan comes to fight against him. Ach shtei nashim. שאם לאיש אחד, הם צרות לזו לזו ומנגדים זו לזו, ופוז איתה. וכמו שהשטן כוונתו לשם שמיים, שיהיה הכל תחת רשות השם יתברך לגמרי, אשר האדם מושל על שטן שהוא יהיה צערה, הרי האדם דבק בו יתברך הוא לגמרי. מה עושה השטן? השטן מנסה להתבטא מהשם, ובאמת, מה עושה השטן? הוא מנסה להתבטא את הכלי של הקדוש ברוך הוא יותר. אם אין גובר עליו, If he doesn't manage to overcome him, Reu megale pnim yuta adam. Shehu nimtza bafual mashu beseter. U kumo she darshu v'hinei tov mo'od ze yetzara. In inverted commas, ze yetzara, you need it in order to have powers, two powers, pushing one against the other. Chein atzmo mashitira torashi sashtein ashim, 
תכלית דבר זה הוא טוב. כי הצרה גורמת אל השנייה, שהיא צרה לה להידבק בבעלה חיבור גמור. That means one wife, each wife wants that connection with the husband. And when each wife wants that connection with the husband, one pushes more to the husband, and the other one gets pushed more to the husband. That means the, like two teams fighting each other to get to the goal. And the goal is the connection of the husband. And the Maral says, yeah, that's the idea of Pnina. She wants her more to be connected to her husband. And in that way, in actual fact, Chana will feel that there's something missing in her life. That what truly connects husband and wife is not only emotional connection. It's not only a sexual connection, but it's also a connection of building up something together. Okay? Husband and wife, okay, besides being emotionally connected, physically connected, they all also have something else which connects them, their future. And without children, there's no future. And therefore, Pnina pushes Chana to want to be connected more to her husband on that realm. And Chana pushes Pnina, but Pnina doesn't need to get pushed. And that's why the, um, the Maral feels that Pnina feels there's not enough of that connection between Chana and Elkanah about the future. There's Nachon. There's a sexual connection there. There's an emotional connection there. There's everything there, except one thing is missing, the building of the future. And Pnina wants Chana to be more connected to Elkanah on that realm. That is the explanation of the Maharal, a brilliant insight. A brilliant insight because it automatically creates a new dimension of family. Okay, Rav Soloveitchik speaks in great detail in his book, Family Connections. And there he speaks about the idea of how there are three dimensions in marriage. Now, and that was Pina's objective in the realm, the way the Maharal sees this story. But now we're going to the other side of the coin. Because the other side of the coin is in actual fact, the tragedy of Nina. The tragedy of Nina. What is the tragedy of Nina? The tragedy of Nina is the following. Ella says the say Chazal in the Midrash. אלא שנפקדה חנה, when חנה had a child, הייתה חנה יולדת בן, אחד. פנינה עוברת שני בנים. פנינה, then buried two children. ילדה חנה, ארבעה, when she had a fourth child, פנינה עוברת שמונה. פנינה, there is children he died when Hannah was pregnant with her fifth son Nitya Nina got scared Shema lest her other children would also die He went and begged from Chana. Amrala, I beg from you. I'm answering you. I know I sinned against you. Please, please give me the ability that my two children will now live. At that moment, Hana prayed for them and they lived. These two children should have died. Because you davened for them. In your name I will call them. Ad Shiv'a. 
The barren woman will have seven children. Zuchana. Therefore, what does Chana do? She governs for Nina. And says one of the great, asks one of the great commentators, is the following. I understand if Nina was really wicked, she was jealous, and she was horrible, and she was disgusting, she deserves a punishment. But according to Chazal, says the al Sheikh, Nina Amru Rabotenu, Isatan in line number 110, Satan upnina l'shem shamayim nitkavnu. Satan al kvod Abraham shenema biyov yotem Abraham upnina they should tizak el Hashem mitain la Hashem erayon. Nina wanted chanata daven like the Maral said. There's something missing in your life. Get on with it. In elu mat ze amur aboteinu. If bechol echad me abanim aita chana yoledet aita pnina koveret. This is so, so strange. Lama yumtu baneha. Why should her children die? Zu Torah, zu schara. This is the Torah. This is her sachar. That is the question the Al Sheikh asks. If I understand, says the al Sheikh, that what? That, in actual fact, Nina was a Rasha, all well and good. The minute Chazal come and say, Shem Shamayim, how does this other Midrash come and tell us that in actual fact, she gets a punishment? Zutorah, Zuschara, if you remember that the statement of Zutara Zuschara is written in relationship to Rabbi Akiva. Moshe Rabbeinu sees the Romans torturing Rabbi Akiva. After Rabbi Akiva explains things which Moshe Rabbeinu didn't think about. And Moshe Rabbeinu shouts out to Akurush Borhu, Zutara Zuschara. The same question Al Sheikh uses against this Midrash of Chazal. Now, what we're going to learn now is perhaps one of the most important insights of relationships. Now, Nitziv says the following. Okay, comes along the Nitziv and says, gives us an insight. Okay, what is the question? A person does something, Lashem Shamayim, gets, gets punished for it. Now, let's see in Parshat Toledot. We all learned about Parshat Toledot. Yaakov Avinu takes the brachot away from Esau. And say Chazal the following. Perhaps you've heard about this Midrash before. Ha'inu divarifka, shiyu shnei g'dayei zim. Take two goats. Say Chazal. Why two goats? Similar to the two seirim which we offer up on Yom Kippur. One Lashem Shamayim, Echad Lashem, one which was thrown over the mountain. Shneim Shavim B'mitzvatam. Both of them you're commanded. Af al gav shezeh likdusha v'zeh lehefech. Ach, shtei amidot shi Yaakov oseh. Yaakov does two things. Ha'echet, ha'chat. Ha'emet, b'kiyum mitzvatimo. He keeps the mother, the, the keeps the commandment of his mother, that is like the holy goat, the one which is offered up. The other one, a sheker, lying. Shemarame et aviv. Shneihem nechshavim le mitzvah. Both are considered a mitzvah. Ulavi al yadam et abrachot. Hine, amru ba midrash rabba, shneanash yaakov avinu, Yaakov Avinu was punished The Esau cried very loud cry. As Nechama Leibovich used to say, 
when the Torah says something in great detail or describes it, this is a bad deal. Yaakov Avinu made Esau so upset. And this, say Chazar, the Hevi, Shemodachai, Sa'ak, Sa'aka, Dola, Umara. When Mordechai hears of the Gezerah of Haman, he cries out, Sa'aka, Dola, Umara. What Yaakov did to Esau, later years, Haman, Akurj Borhu as to Mordechai. Says, let's see if I don't understand. He also caused his father to behave like that. Yitzchak also trembled. He got the shock of his life. So why is Yaakov punished? Esau, not what he does to his father. Says, says, let's see. Avalain Yan. Lishtamesh Avera Lishma. Use an Avera for the Shem Shamayim. Yesh Lizaer Arbe. Shelo Lenot Mena Klum. You're not allowed to have any benefit from an Avera Lishem Shamayim. Lo dami lo se mitzvah. It's not like keeping a mitzvah. When you sit in the sukkah, you're not only keeping a mitzvah, you can enjoy sitting in a, mitzvah, a sukkah. When you do a mitzvah, you're allowed to enjoy it. A person likes matzah, he's also allowed to enjoy eating matzah, even though he's keeping the mitzvah. But when you do an avera, shame shamayim, like Yaakov Avinu does, ana'a, the benefit, Shemagia la goof mize, the benefit which your body gets from it, al porcho avera. The end of the day, this is an avera. Ukuvoa bivamot of kuf gimel venazed of half gimel. Abe hai shamru gdola avera lishma. Like we learned from Yael, and we spoke about it when we learned about Yael and Dvor and Sisra. Umakshen, the Gemara asks, when she slept with Sisra, she got benefit. Even though she was allowed to, in order to save the other people, because she was so, so sad when he heard Yitzchak, his father, trembling. And he was very sad. But he didn't have any choice because his mother told him to do it. When he heard Esau shouting out, what him again. Got Esau. I managed to get the Bechorah, and now I've got the Brachot. I've beaten him twice. Two goals, guys. Two goals, I've beaten him. Alze, Tare, Aram, Ze, Alide, Averash, or Sheker, Asur, Lehanot, Mize. You're not allowed to have any benefit from an Avera. Now, let's take the model of the Natsiv and take it back to Chana and Nina. Nina, she wanted Chana to have children. But on the other hand, say Chazal, deep down, there was also a bit of, she enjoyed it. She enjoyed it. That means to say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu looks deep down in the soul of the human being. He weighs up. 
I hate every minute of the Avera. Panina hate every single time she made fun of Chana. And she was saying to herself, yeah, I'm doing it. L'shem Shamayim, L'shem Shamayim, L'shem Yichud Kucha Barecho. Chana, go and buy tr- 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 uh, um, food for your children. Chana, go and buy this. Chana, do this for your children. Now, what did Nina feel? Her objective might have been a shame shamayim. Deep down, there can also be a slight amount of personal benefit. One minute, my computer. I've just got to plug in my computer. One minute. Of Hazal come and tell us, correct. Two things occurred in this story. The first thing which occurred was what? Was Chana and was Pninaz Shem Shamayim. The benefit, she also got a bit of benefit, say Chazal, says the Natsiv, personal benefit. She had a bit of enjoyment also while she was doing it. There were certain digs which she did. And therefore, Going to the Natsiv, that is the benefit. Now, that's what the Natsiv says. Natsiv, when we learned it, when we spoke about it, line, line 150, says the following. When you do an Averali Shema, there's got to be two conditions. When you want to create a Machloikas, Rabbi Isai, you feel you need to make a Machloikas in your shul. Okay, they're all problems. You don't like, you think the way this gub is doing it is what? It's no good. Shame Shamayim, you want the shul to run in a better way. Yeah. And you therefore you begin to make a balagan in the shul to get rid of this gubber because he's not run doing it the correct way. It's the shame Shamayim. Everybody knows that. The shame Shamayim. Okay. All the Pashkavilim in Yerushalayim, it's full of it. It's all the shame Shamayim. Says the Natsiv. In order to make a machloikas, what have you got to be sure of? Tznai Rishon, Shelo yehene me'avera, Shum dava, Shelo yehene me'ota avera klal, Ukedita gabe ya'el, etc., etc. And now we're going further down, line 155. Yesh lach shov, Atna sheni, Shiesh lach shov, Im kedai avera, If it's worth it, This avera l'shem shamayim, the machloket or a difa le gabe mitzvah zo, shemechashev sheyalemize. He's got to do, balance it out. Is it worth it or not? Is it worth it? Pnina has to think to herself, is my l'shem shamayim worth it? What will Chana feel? Is it really l'shem shamayim? Or how am I going to weigh it up? Will I be 100% correct in what I do? Is it worth me, Pnina, pushing Chana? Etc., etc. And that Rabotai said, Pnina did not do those two Cheshbonot. She didn't fulfill the two conditions. Before she started pushing Chana to go and daven, she should have weighed up. What are the consequences of all this? Now, I want to go to the last Keta part of this explanation, which is a very important one of Reb Chaim Shmulevitz, the Rosh Yeshiva of Mir. Says Reb Chaim Shmulevitz the following. Kvar bi'arnu, sheba'averot, sheben adam lechavero. Averot, between ben adam lechavero. Lo o elet avana ova. No good intentions help. Afilu asa. And even if he did it, it kaven le shem shamayim. O kumoshe matzino bifnina shamru chazal ki le shem shamayim nit kavna. Afal pi kenen shab ofen chamur kol kach. He was punished in the most terrible way. Shemetu banea. Katuv rabat banim umlala. A woman who had many children now becomes despondent. Even though 
He was a tzaddiket. He was very hard for the tzaret chana. All what she did was bring it to tzfila. Why was the punishment so great? Because, sorry, somebody who hurts his friend. Whatever he's thinking. When you are make person upset, it's as if you are putting your hand in the fire. Whatever intention you've got can never change anything. I'm putting my hand in the fire. Sakana Shiba the same way as fire burns down nature, so hurting a person's feelings are, whatever your good intentions are, it doesn't make any difference at all, Raboy Sai. It doesn't make any difference. You've hurt somebody. I, he gained from it. He had children. And I had children. What difference does it make? At the time when it was said, it hurt. At the time when it was done, it hurt. And the minute you hurt somebody's feelings, automatically, what's going to happen? I think going to punish you. That is the story of Chana and Pnina. You may have the greatest intentions. You may have the greatest meaning. But what have you done at the end of the day? You want somebody to keep a mitzvah. You want him to be a tzaddik. But how do you push him to be a tzaddik? How do you push a person to daven? You're going to hurt his feelings. As the Khalila. Never. Therefore, says the mitzvah of tochacha, of telling people off, has got to be done in such a special way that you don't hurt anybody's feelings. You go to them privately, you go to them quietly, etc. You speak to them nicely. But the minute you hurt a person's feeling and you damage somebody's emotions, it's like putting your hand in fire. That, Rabotai, is the essence of the story of Chana and Pnina. Chana and Pnina is the essence of behavior, of connections, of how to speak to one another. And even though Pnina intentions were great, it doesn't make any difference. And we're just going to finish off this Shi'ur. Next week, I'm giving also a share, and we're going to take Chana's perspective. Here we've spoken of Pnina's perspective. And therefore, we're going to have three perspectives in this triangle. Elkana, Pnina. The first she was on Chana and the prayer. Tomorrow, we're going to speak about Chana as a person next week. But now, I just want to finish off by learning with you the explanation of the Al Sheikh himself. The Al Sheikh himself says the following. There's the Al Sheikh. Ach Shava, line number 164. She had two intentions. She really, really had bad intentions. She saw how Elkana loved Chana more than her. And because of that, I am not telling you what I am not telling you. Number two, Number two, she needs the same shamayim. He should sit up with it. Palel view gum can you ladim with two sarakina. As it knew 
Manot b'mechsat nefashot. Then everything will become equal. Minit chana will have what? Will have children. Automatically, the, the division of portions will become more equal. Zeim ye ma'ma v'chiyasta tzarata. Tzara, she arrival made her angry. Shual amur. And also angry. She knew. The fact that she didn't have children, Nina knew that Chana was a tzadika, and she knew that her tefillah would help, but she wasn't davening enough. Hashem That means on behalf of her womb, Nina davened, and let's look at the sentence and go back right to the beginning. What does it say in the sentence in line number? In line number 14, take a look at the sentence five, Vashem Sagarachma. And then it says, Vichyasta Tsara Gamkas Bavu Arima, Kisagar Hashem Baadrachma. Hashem closed it on the for the sake that Chana will daven on behalf of her womb. Hashem. Once Chana's tefillah on behalf of her womb. And that Pnina realized. And that's why it's written two kasim, One kas, because the physical anger and the spiritual anger in order that what? That Chana should daven on behalf of her womb. And that says that al Sheikh is two kabanot mixed together, two intentions. What do we learn from this? We've learned perhaps one of the greatest Lessons of human behavior. People often shout out, I do things l'shem shamayim. I do things for this reason. Uh, let's now try to analyze why you've done it l'shem shamayim. What is your true reason? How much l'shem shamayim is involved in here? Half and half, the 75, 25. Is it 90, 10? Doesn't make any difference. The minute it says Reb Chaim Shulevitz is even ten percent or five percent, you've heard that person. Not worth it. Just cut it out. Don't bother. The Sefer of Shmuel and the Sefer, of the first chapter, speaks about human relationships. That's what we have to learn when we learn Tanakh. When we learn Tanakh, we have to try to understand it not only from uh, learning Torah it also teaches us personal and interpersonal relationships. This story of Hanan Pnina and the effect of two women in one house Sarah and Hagar, Rachel and Leah, Chana Pnina is never a good recipe for marriage. Ever can be. Okay? And even if one wife will do be a tzadika, or both will be tzadikot, and you take Leah and Rachel, who both built, okay, we know at the end of Megillah Drut, it's written there, they both built Neset Israel. Because of that, there will always be these differences within the Shvatim. Yudan, Rachel, Yuda, Shevet, the children of Leah, the children of Rachel, tensions which exist. And they are double intentions. Even from one wife, you have children. Tensions exist between children. How much more so between two wives or four wives like Yaakov had, etc., etc. And even though there can be some unity, there will always be some problems. And that is why this story of Hanan Pnina is read on the first day of Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah Yom Adin. Rosh Hashanah, the day of judgment. The judgment which exists is not only between Ben Adam Lechaviro, 
בין אדם למקום. ‫מזור זה דם בין אדם לחברו. ‫And this story of פנינה, ‫even though she does it לשם שמיים, ‫also has its facets of punishment ‫because of the avera ‫which was done בין אדם לחברו. ‫That, רבותיי, if there are any questions, ‫now, open up the microphones ‫and you can ask whatever you want. ‫פליז. Questions? Nothing, no heyarot, no... Okay. Okay, we'll finish off then. And uh, next week, we're going to speak about the perspective of Hana in this love triangle, as you say in the films. Keep well, guys. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank you, Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank you.